Welcome to Ninon Speaks. I'm your host, Ninon de Verde Rosa, and my co-host is AJ Dean. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome to Ninon Speaks. Once again, we're back on the, on the air. We're all over the world. It's amazing. We have two incredible gentlemen on the show. They are absolutely amazing. Um, it's funny how all this comes together and at a time when a lot of the entertainers right now, which I've been hearing all over the world, that they need so much help and they need so much to get themselves out there as who they are, what they are, and actually what they're doing, because they're obviously not performing. I mean, that's obvious, we all know that, but they're still gonna perform. So they've been doing a lot of, um, a lot of Zoom and a lot of other platforms. So we are able to get them out there um, so we can introduce them and, and see who they are. So um, AJ, how are you? I'm great. And we have such, I'm so excited because we have two wonderful gentlemen coming on. I'm going to admit them right now. And sure. who I want to introduce Byron X. Ken Smith. He's an award-winning HBO film and TV actor, dancer, singer, rapper, and coach, and the amazing D-Love Stack. He's a rapper, record producer, and artist. And his songs include Gotta Get Rich and a really cool catchy one called You, you Ain't Gotta Like My Sh. <laughs> hello, gentlemen. How are you? I do. I do. How are you doing? Hello, hello. <laughs> now, you both look amazing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. As do you too. Yeah, as you too, yes. We've managed to get this together. Um, obviously, this is a photograph of them on one side. We've got Byron and uh, and What's that? Byron and D Love. I I like well, who's this? Who which one is which? Who's D Love? I'm D Love Stacks. D Love, all right. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got the more serious one, Byron. Now um, what do you what exactly do you do? As you know, um, I have not pre-interviewed either one of you because I never pre-interview. AJ right. knows a lot about you. I know nothing about you, but I just know you're both very famous. You've done very, very well. So tell me your story, Byron. Well, I started off, I'm from Vegas here, born and raised. I uh, started off doing some theater, also dancing, doing Michael Jackson impersonations. And from there, jumped in some television. Uh, my first audition was for Disney Channel. Wow. With Stevens. Uh, that was Shia LaBeouf, who was the star of that show. Did you get that? Did you get that part? I did. I got my first audition. You know, that's amazing. You know, when you go to Disney and you actually work for Disney, it's amazing how it puts you up the ladder and puts you on the scale. It's amazing how that, that happens. That's very true. Yeah. And from there, we went on, got all the way over to FX with Michael Chiklets and Glenn Close and Anthony Anderson in the uh, TV show called The Shield. Uh, I played one of the, the gangsters in that, <laughs> in that show. Yeah. You look like a gangster. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they dressed you up a little bit, huh? Yeah, you know, made me look the part a little bit more than what I do now. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I just want to jump in real quick and introduce and say that our entertainment director, Georgette Dante, wanted me to mention that she want, would like both of you gentlemen both of you fine gentlemen and your mother, Lady Brandy, the beautiful Lady Brandy, to be in her burlesque movie in the future. So that's very exciting. What do you think about ah, that? Nice. Well, thank that's you. Beautiful. Hey, guys, guys, do you want to be in a burlesque movie? I mean, but I'm in, I'm in for, I try, yeah. You know. <laughs> Depending on what kind of part I'm playing <laughs> and what the movie is, what the it's going to be about. <laughs> a scantily dress, but I have to say that Georgette and myself and AG, um, jo Georgette and I are going to be the owners of this club, mm. and AJ is the manager, so we're going to be dressed in kind of uh, zoot suits or whatever we're going to have, and she wants it like uh, old fashioned sort of, you know, mafia with okay. those suits, and oh, it's pretty cool, I must say. I, I can dig that, I can dig that. You can <laughs> Me too. I think it's going to be very cool. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you very much uh, for mentioning Georgette. You know, we always like to mention her as much as we possibly can. She's a great asset out there. She has been an extremely great asset to Ninon Speaks. 
She's brought in a tremendous amount of guests and they've all been wonderful. Like yourselves and like your mother. Oh, your mother is amazing. How do you <laughs> Thank you. keep up with her? All the time, we do it. <laughs> Got a funny feeling she's right kind of the discipline you are not going to do this but you can do that and you can't do this but you can do that is that kind of it was actually more freedom that allowed us to yeah. become who we were that's why everything kind of flows better that way so she allowed us to just kind of grow into our own and it's, it's kind of worked out for us did you ever think when you were a young child you know your mother was very famous and, and when you come from famous uh, parents it can be very difficult growing up because you're never there because they're there. And now you've got to prove, you know, that you are part of this family and you do well. Was it hard for you? Um, not for me, not at all. Not really. She was always inclusive. So when yeah. she's rehearsing, we would be right there watching her sing and dance and rehearse. So that was always fun. And she, That's what sparked me to get into it. She used to make me, me do Michael Jackson when I was a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> And that was one of my favorite singers. Then he started doing Michael Jackson <laughs> as he was growing up as a little kid. So, so you became two Michael Jacksons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, two Michael Jacksons. There we go. <laughs> it's very hard. I would imagine. I don't know, but I would imagine it's very hard to actually. Um, I'm not gonna say copy him, but sort of do what he did because he <clears throat> was natural and he was so amazing. He just move so naturally it didn't seem like it was there's any effort in it but apparently he did um rehearse practically every day yeah you guys to come to lady brandy place to see him to do the michael jackson <laughs> you see how smooth he is he does the whole thing it thank looks you. flawless thank you, thank you. <laughs> yes we're hoping we're hoping that maybe that we might see that sometime this year it might that would be a wonderful treat. Byron, I did want to ask you if that's okay. Who inspires you as an actor? Who do you look up to? Because you're a wonderful actor. And I wanted to know who, who you look up to. Thank you so much. Uh, well, I'm really big into animation, uh, different characters. Like some of my favorite movies are Planet of the Apes. Uh, I really like Lord of the Rings. And the star, the, the guy who stole the show is Andy Serkis. Uh, if he can make you believe and, and connect with an ape, I think that that's something that's outstanding. So his motion capture really, when I seen him uh, do Smeagol in Lord of the Rings, that was phenomenal. Also, of course, the, the great Denzel Washington. Yeah. And um, also Chadwick Boseman taking on many roles. Every role he chose, he felt like was serving a purpose. Yeah. And I find that to be absolutely inspiring so that's that's something that i'm going after myself now instead of just kind of taking whatever you can from now on it's kind of choosing it with a purpose because it's going to live on forever so well well you're actually right with that denzel washington always took on his part like a lot of these very famous good actors and actresses i i like to say actresses and actors so we include both of them they don't become and I, they actually take on it takes quite a long time to actually take on that person have you started doing that? Um, I'm going to go back down to, to D. Love. Have you started to do that? Or are you in acting as well? Uh, no, I'm not into acting, but that is something I want to pursue in the future. You know, that's why I'm, I'm doing music so that I probably could be a segue in for me to start acting and doing other things as well. When you do your music, um, D. Love, I love that, D. Love. Um, when you, how, how do you how do you kind of start your day in sort of um, bringing in new songs, bringing in new people, bringing in yourself and, and bringing it that all together? How do you actually do that? Um, I, I listen to a lot of music. I listen to oldies. I listen to all the music that's out now and I kind of get inspired from it. And, and then it just makes me just want to start putting down a lot of music, but I get a lot of beats that come in from my friends and stuff like that. And then, so when I, as I sit and listen to all these music and I reflect on what's going on in my life, that's how I come up with writing my story in music, you know? Yeah, because I always think that's so fascinating because all of us in this world are so different. We all think we're all, we are all, we're all alike, actually, every one of us in the entire, yeah. we're all born, you know, the woman and the man, we're all born the same, it's just, some are tall, some are short, some are fat, you know, we're all different. 
But it, it's what we have for supposedly up here in this brain box. Right. <laughs> you try to investigate and try to sort of put into the world. And I've often thought in the music business, it's such a, there's such a competition in it. I mean, even in the movie business as well, but the music business is, there's such a large competition. How do you, because you're quite, you've done an awful lot of stuff. What are, you know, and you've been out there. How have you separated yourself from that? How did you make yourself that different? Well, I try to maintain doing myself, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I listen to a lot of uh, rappers like now, today, like the new artists to me, you know, yeah. they I, can, I can't really def separate who is who, you know what I'm saying? So for me, I got a deep voice. So I try to make sure I use my voice and make sure I sound way different than somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And I, I also, you know, I do my style is way different than other rappers as well. So but that's what makes you different, though. That is where it comes in: is to to not to try to copy somebody else's voice, right. but to try <laughs> to enhance your own voice. I, I have a question. I got I a deep voice, <laughs> D Love Stacks, I have a question. Um, what was your inspiration behind uh, Gotta Get Rich, your song? Gotta Get Rich? Uh, well, I like, I, like, I like having things in life. <laughs> so I like always looking at, I'll be looking at things on TV. I look at all the things that people want to have in life. You know what I'm saying? Of course, we got to work hard to get it. But that, that was my inspiration behind it, just trying to put together a song that that'll motivate people to go out and work hard and get, get yes. out of life. I, I know that I know you like E40, Tupac, Ice Cube, Snoop Dogg, Too Short. They've all influenced your music a little bit. Can you tell us a little bit why uh, why that was? Yeah, the reason why I like Tupac and E40, they all they all spit such amazing stories when you listen to their music. You can like, you like right there with them and you walking down the story you listening, it's like like it's on TV, except you're listening to it through the headphones. You know what I'm saying? And, and when you, when you, uh, I kind of come from similar backgrounds as uh, Tupac, E-40 and all those guys. And we kind of all walk the same walk. So when you listen to it and it, and it hits you, you empathize with it. Like, hey, I've been through that too, so. <laughs> So that's why I was really motivated to do what I do too, doing listening to their stories. But at the same time, you're trying to be different as well. So that you have mm -hmm. that in that nice deep Absolutely. <clears throat> understand where they're all coming from and what they're all doing. Right. So next thing I know, because I know Snoop Dogg is into this, you are going to be in crypto. <laughs> Cryptocurrency. <laughs> 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 Everybody's into cryptocurrency now. That's the new thing. That's the new wave. What you need to do, you know, what you need to do. You need to write a song about cryptocurrency. I, I, I thought about that. <laughs> you know, yeah. So hot right now. The younger generation are going crazy over it. It's so, a it's a rapper by the name of Big Sean. He had a uh, said uh, a line like something about cryptocurrency in, in one of his records. I forgot the name of the record, but Big Shine has spoken about it in his record. Well, now it's your turn. You get a, a record out, you get one out with the crypto, because this goes to the younger generation. It goes to like, I'm talking about like the 45s and down. The older people right. are so interested in crypto. Right. <laughs> you know why? Because they don't understand it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can lace it up for them. It ain't no problem. <laughs> yeah, that's the bar. Um, back to you, Byron. Um, what have you got planned? What What have you got in, in, in sort of in what you want to do? So okay. the next project I'm working on is really trying to push a concept that I have in mind about getting the Black Panther back into the MCU. I know with the untimely passing of Chadwick Boseman, a lot of fans were kind of struck by that, myself included. And, you know, Kevin Feige went on record to say they're not looking to recast. And I completely understand that. But at the same time, that character is so important to yes. so many people. And there's so much that hasn't been told of T'Challa's story that I'm really trying my best to get in the best shape that I can. And uh, just training, training, training. To <laughs> 
at least get in an audition. But isn't there, is in Vegas, isn't there a, a Black Panther group? There's an actual gentleman, I'm, God, he's been on my show, and he has the Black Panther group, and he does a lot of Black Panther. He's actually, his father, I, I'm, it's rude of me to not remember his name, because I didn't think it was going to come up, but his father actually started the Black Panther, you know, the Black Cat Panther group. Oh, nice. So are we talking about the films or the actual Black Panther party? The Black Panther group. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. I'm talking about the films, the comedy yeah. films. <laughs> was also making a film about the Black Panther as well. Nice, nice. I, I just want to I just want to inter, interject if I may and uh, let everybody know the audience that uh, Byron XT X10 Smith has done a beautiful portrayal of the Black Panther movie T'Challa that he has on his YouTube channel and I watched it and it is such uh, it's done with honor and respect. And um, I just wanted to reiterate how important that message is. And it is really beautiful. I enjoyed it so much. And you did such a commanding performance of that. Did you submit that as an audition? Uh, have you heard anything back about that? Thank you so much. I have not yet found an avenue to submit. So what I'm kind of doing is I'm reaching out to a lot of the fans on YouTube. There's a lot of really popular channels that kind of go over comic book films and comic books themselves. So I kind of send my stuff to them, you know, hoping that something will bite one day and they, they just take a look at it and see that my heart and my passion is there uh, for that character, so. Well, you, you might want to start sending it to a few more people or make sure it gets out because sometimes, you know, you, you have to do the work yourself. And I know we all have managers and agents, but, and they're all very busy and they're all great. But sometimes we've got to push it down a little bit ourselves and not just sit back and wait, especially in this business when there are so many people trying to do the same thing. What made you want to go into the Black Panther um, style? Well, with that, that character particularly, I'm really like a huge comic book. So DC and Marvel, there's always this nerdy rivalry, uh -huh. but I love both. I named both of my kids after superheroes. So <laughs> I've always had this real passion to want to become that type of inspiration because I know growing up looking at like Superman, Batman, Iron Man, Spider-Man, all those guys really, really pushed me and inspired me. So I said for myself, I want to live that type of life, even though, of course, without the superpowers and all that good stuff, but you could still be a stand up person. You can always treat people res with respect and always put your best foot forward. So I just kind of started living my life that way. I would say mainly in high school is when it really took a hold of me. And, um, it's funny because ever since then, people have kind of respected that. Usually it's kind of like, man, you're grown. What are you doing trying to act like a superhero, you know? But <laughs> look at the people who play superheroes. It, it works out for them. <laughs> That's what makes us all different. And when we take right. on, you know, let's just go. I always think of people like that a little bit jealous of that you can do it and I can't. So that's so I'd rather you didn't do it than, than I'm OK. <laughs> yeah. It's funny you say that because the people who did talk about me then then try to sneak around. And they're like, so uh, <laughs> how did you get into this? And then, you know, try to dig my brain a little bit more. But I just really want to be that inspiration for the world and show them that, you know, it's, it's possible. You, you and it is definitely possible because if you want that dream, you can definitely have it. I'm a prize example. I had several dreams that I wanted. I worked hard. Nobody stopped me. I had everybody saying, oh, you can't do this and you can't do that. And I thought, oh, well, as soon as they said that, actually, I actually went the opposite way. I thought, okay, now I'm really okay. going to fight for it. <laughs> I'm really going to have it. Um, as two brothers... <laughs> And as both of you are doing similar things, they're both in the entertainment business, so one's acting, one's doing, how do you two get on and, and how much do you help each other and also keeping your mother involved in everything? Well, my brother, he actually, the one that shot my videos and he actually uh, do all the props, all that stuff in our, in our videos and stuff like that. And it just comes natural, you know, because we're a family, you know, we're a tight family. So it just it's comes good. natural. It ain't really no pressure or nothing like that. Yeah. As soon as you get any pressure, call the brother in. Yeah, um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> anything we call him, this is my little brother. So I'll be like, hey, you know what I'm saying? We want to shoot a video, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes if we got to use some, you know, bigger production or something, we are, and okay. he's still involved when he, you know what I'm saying, when we do the bigger productions too. So. 
any resource that I have, I try to, you know, push his way and help him bring his vision to life as far as his music goes. So, no. Yeah. When, when both of you growing up and sort of getting into this business, when did you feel the moment was that I, we've made it, we've got here, and I'm sure each one of you was different, but when you said to me, oh my goodness, I've been chosen for this and I've made it, how was that feeling and when did that happen? Well, for me, just me moving out of, because uh, we used to live in North Las Vegas. <laughs> so being away from there and out of there, I feel it, it's, that's like a weight off my shoulders, personally, you know what I'm saying? And and it feels just good, actually. Yeah, so you lived in the, this. Did you come to live near the Strip? Where all the action is? Yeah, we had, we had moved out of there from like to Summerlin, like the Desert Shores area, if you're familiar with that area. It shows, that's beautiful, that's beautiful. And what about you, um, Byron? It's mostly been, I would say, kind of a goalpost for me. So in high school, I knew I wanted to be an actor, but I had never really done anything besides the Even Stevens uh, Disney Channel, which was huge. Mm -hmm. And so I went to audition for Singing in the Rain. And I, would, I really loved that movie growing up. So when I booked the lead role of Don Lockwood, that was kind of one level. And then I said, okay, my next goal is to uh, be in a really popular TV show. And then that's when I hit The Shield. And from there, I said, you know, I want to kind of create my own project and I want a million views on YouTube. Oh, my goodness. And my buddy and I got together and that's when we made Daywalker, Blade Origins. And then, boom, another chapter was hit. And then I got to star in uh, Jason Bourne with Matt Damon when they were filming here on the Strip and uh, with uh, Paul Greengrass was the director. And as, it's funny because I started off as background, but I refused to just stay there. It was something like I got to get seen. So I would kind of walk around so he could kind of see me. Uh -huh. and he ended up taking notice and, and bumped me up to the leader of the um, SWAT team. So oh, wow. Was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, that was that's great. That's awesome. Chapters for me. But that's how you that's exactly how you do it you do it by you and and that's what i was saying with an agent and with a manager they're great but unless you push yourself forward and that's what you've both done you've both put, pushed yourself forward do you have any other brothers and sisters we do yeah what what I, I, how many and, and where are they <laughs> we have another brother lg he's actually also a rapper too uh and two sisters okay and two sisters now what do the sisters do do they rap <laughs> no, <laughs> they're just walking around beautiful all day. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Speaking of beautiful, I love this picture of these two brothers here holding their hands in um, love and bonding. Can you share with us a little bit about that? What is this picture and what does it mean to you? That picture was the day that our mother was gave the award for what award was that? I, I'm not even sure. She had got <laughs> some award some, someday. We was there, you know, uh, doing our family thing and, you know. The BMA, uh, BMA award. Yeah, the BMA award. And uh, and also we had unveiled that my, our record company that day as well. The G Ice is our record label. So we had, and me and him had took that picture first how did that feel do you remember that feeling of you guys together there holding um put it, having your hands bonded like that was that a special absolutely. moment absolutely it was so powerful to me just because we have our mom who's been this inspiration and leader for mm -hmm. us and not only is she winning an award but we're also unveiling our company and it's our first time announcing it and, and then to have your brother there like that your older brother everything about it was was really perfect and so that picture kind of captured that moment for, for the two. I have a funny feeling this has been your total life though hasn't it because of your mother yeah. and you've always um, been out there you, she's always done so well she's she's performed in so many different places and sort of and brought her whole family into it I did not know there was five children so taking care of five children and taking care of her career I mean, so remarkable. That is just amazing. Um, if you wished anything um, for your mother, what would it be? Both of you, this is a, for both of you. 
What about you? What's greatness in for her to, to succeed everything she wants? Because you know we got the greatest mother in the world. You know our mother. Man, we love our mother to death. Absolutely. So <laughs> we just want her to have be happy and have all the things that she want out of life. That's from same yes. to you, Byron. Absolutely, good health, good wealth, and joy, as much joy as she can take. I just want to make sure that she has those words coming from you and it's all over the air. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I want to give a shout out to Lady Brandy's Place in Las Vegas, the best rhythm and blues uh, club. And also, she is the queen of the blues, Lady Brandy herself. Yes, right. Yes, she is, 100% she is. <laughs> Absolutely. So you've got a few things in store for yourself. Um, anything, what's coming up? For me, I'm working on, I got like three three mixtapes that's about to drop. And then I got an album that I'm working on. We're working on the G-Ice label. I'm bringing in, uh, I got like three artists that's finna come up under that. And uh, hopefully we should be able to start doing shows. Now, when you do a show, what sort of show do you do and where do you do it? Uh, most of the time we used to be on the road, but uh, we haven't been on the road because of the, you know, the pandemic and stuff. So yeah. right now we're going to start uh, doing shows right there at the Lady Brandy's place. We're probably going to start doing them shows on a Friday night because they do the blues thing on the Saturday night. Well, now where is this place? Um, tell me where Lady Brandy's. Um, it's uh, it's on uh, East Sahara, 953 East Sahara Commercial Center. Okay, fabulous. I know that that's right behind. Um, that's right behind the Western Hotel, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Behind that. Oh, yeah, is it? Was it Westgate? Westgate. Sorry, Westgate. Yeah, Westgate. Yeah. Westgate Hotel. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what about you, uh, Byron? And what have you got in the books? What have you got coming up? Right now, I'm going to be uh, doing a new photo shoot for the Black Panther campaign that I'm trying to build myself. So. Right now, it's literally just dieting, working out, <laughs> and trying to get to my best version of myself. <laughs> so once I hit that um, that photo shoot, I'm really going to be pushing those photos extremely heavy. What can we do, um, what can we do to help both of you in, in both of what you're doing? Um, Byron, how can we help you? Um, you want to send us some, some literature, some media, and we can put it out there. How would you like us to help you? Absolutely. I'll definitely, once I do the new photo shoot, I will shoot uh, the photos over to you. That would mean so much to me because the more support, obviously, the further you can go in life. So thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, send those to um, AJ. AJ will make sure that those are put out. And then when, when she puts it up on Facebook, then I sort of share it and send it all over the place. And uh, that's the same for you, uh, D-Love, right? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, we can, we can absolutely, uh, for, for sure, to do that. Now, another question, which is always very important to me. Um, how can you help, um, D-Love, how could you help the younger generation um, in, in how you started and how they can start, because they're starting in a very difficult time right now? What advice would you like to give them? Okay, I, I can tell them now, because <clears throat> I talk to a lot of uh, young guys, like almost practically every day. You know, I tell them just keep doing what they're doing. Just keep uh, recording. Try to just bury your craft. Tighten it up as tight as you can. Make sure all your music, your words is clear. You know what I'm saying? And also, you know, try to steer away from bad energy. Try to keep good energy, positive energy around you. And uh, don't give up. Just keep on doing what you do. Connect the dots. Try to connect with everybody that you can. Keep positive. Yeah. Is it socializing a lot and meeting people a lot? Is that what they need to do? Yes. Sometimes you got to meet a lot of people. You know, you got to do a lot of shows. You got to, you know, you just got to just pretty much just be out there. Pretty and much. know who you are and what you're doing. Uh, what about yeah. you, Aaron? How, how could you um, help? Because the, the movie industry is a little bit different. Um, it's hard. I don't know if it's harder, but as a young person, it's hard. Yeah, so right now, I actually... I'm a, a mentor in the PAL program, and there's a particular student in there who wants to get into filmmaking. And I told him, if there's ever a time that he's available and we're on set, I've offered him a chance to come out and kind of get a behind the scenes look of what we do. Uh, I'm really, really big into inspiring the youth because that's when I caught the bug of entertaining. I, I was a kid, so I, I never want that to, to die off. 
even no. with my kids, I, I enjoy when they're playful and using their imagination and just jumping around and, you know, whatever it takes, I want to keep that candle burning for as many young people as possible. That's wonderful. How many children do you have, Brian? I have three boys. Three boys. What happened? What's happening to these girls? The girls are disappearing. <laughs> I have some girls. <laughs> well, I, I got girls. I got I got two girls. Oh, good. Okay, so we're kind yeah, of. Yeah, I got two girls and a boy. Oh, you got two. We got three of each. Because I mean, that's been rather a handful for the last year. They've been at home a lot, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you've asked been too hard, though. I mean, I feel just to shout my boys out. They've been doing absolutely amazing. They, you know, get up and do what they have to do on the little Zoom thing. It's it's a totally different world now. So I think they're handling it really, really well. <laughs> but don't you feel that you've kind of got in both of you? You feel you kind of got back into the family thing a little bit because you've got, you know, the wife is home, the children are home and you're home and you're all kind of working around all this and you've been being entertainers. You've all got this sort of thing going all the time. Yeah, uh, for me, like, just being home, you know, I uh, I go, I got a whole room to myself to where I write my music and listen to music, and I just kind of close myself off, and then I come on back out when I want to, uh, you know, just be around the family and stuff like that. That's good. And and, and you, Baron, you've done the same thing with them. Did you feel you get closer? No, we're almost, we're always around each other. <laughs> we're kind of <laughs> always, we we drive each other, so. We're either, if we're not watching a movie, we're playing the video games together or we're cooking and dancing. Every morning we wake up, it's to music. Every That's night we go to sleep, it's to music. So I try to keep my family as close as possible. Oh, I, I, th I think that's marvelous. Keep an eye on them. Also, yeah. all going to the same business. Any of them sort of taking on your talents? Uh, are they going anywhere? My oldest son has actually been writing a lot. He wants to become a rapper as well. And uh, he's actually worked with his uncle here and, and getting in the studio and, and really trying to perfect his craft. So he's jumping in and we'll see about the other two. They were kind of in the sports before, you know, everything kind of shut down. They were doing basketball and boxing and were excelling at that tremendously. So we'll see how it all goes. Nothing wrong with the sports arena, I'll tell you. That's right. <laughs> what do you do these days? My daughter raps, but she 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 has kids now, so <laughs> I have grandkids. <laughs> I'm gonna start somewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> Many women rappers, though, are there? Yeah. yeah, she's pretty good at it. You know, she's good at it. You know, but she uh, she you know she got to juggle the kids and uh and the babies and stuff now too. So it's like pretty rough for her on that on on trying to do. Rap music nope. and juggle the kids. Okay, so let's get down to business. How can anybody reach you? They can reach me uh, at my email or or uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, all that, all the platforms. There are all the platforms. So you're on Instagram, but what name are you going under? I'm D Love Vegas. Okay, don't forget um, all the audience out there, D Love Vegas, and that'll be on Instagram, Facebook. Um, YouTube, you name Everything, it. Yep. Yeah, they're there. Um, what about you, uh, Byron? So for Instagram and Facebook, it's Byron times 10 Smith. And on TikTok, it's at the times 10. Well, do you do a few little TikTok? I love this TikTok. <laughs> they come up with this crazy thing. <laughs> my TikTok is funny because I, and I've always lip synced my whole life. And I started doing country. I really have like a hidden passion for country. And I put up one TikTok one day of me lip singing a country artist song and it went viral. It took off. Really? And yeah. So ever since then, I kind of stick to that formula <laughs> since it seems like something everybody wants to see. So yeah, that, that worked out well with that. I love it. I love it. Um, AJ, what would you like to say? We have only a couple of minutes left. I just wanted to say thank you so much to our wonderful guests. And I want to mention that Byron times 10 Smith also, he, uh, you dressed up as Black Panther and helped in Las Vegas. Is that right? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Absolutely. So what I do, I do parties, events, um, and, I, and I just go out and reach out to the community. So there was a particular event that happened, I want to say a year and a half ago. Um, and I went to the event, kind of just showed up as a surprise and just added that times 10, you know, 
energy to it and made it more fun as I do Spider-Man and I also show up as the Black Panther. So whenever there's an event that I hear about, if I can make it out, I always try to do that just to make it more fun. Awesome. I just want to turn around and thank both of you, uh, our guests. Absolutely amazing. We've learned a lot about the movie industry, um, the rap industry, a, a lot, how we start, how we end, how we go forward and what we do. I also want to thank our audience out there for tuning in and uh, keeping us on the air. It's absolutely amazing. I'd like to also thank AJ. Um, AJ is one of the uh, producers and puts all this together and, and she takes on a lot of the work. <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't know how she does it, but it's absolutely amazing. I just want to thank everybody out there um, for helping us get this out there. Anybody who would like to come on, just get in touch with um, AJ at, Vega, at uh, Ninon Speaks Media Image. Actually, it's just ninonspeaks.com. And uh, is that correct, AJ? AJ? Yes. Yes, it's all um, Ninon Speaks, Ninon de Rosa. Search that, Ninon Speaks, Vegas Live with Ninon. Absolutely wonderful. You're all amazing. I thank all of you so very much for coming on. And uh, be careful. And hugs to your mom. <laughs> thank, you. thank you so much for having us. Before we go, I just want to say thank you for what you do for this community. Uh, we've I've watched a couple of different episodes, and I'm really grateful that we have someone like you that lifts up the community, entertainers, actors, everybody that you can. Thank you so much. 